Gold All Day Friends. This is Michael Canadas with the Grovian Doll Museum and Carmel Doll Shop. I'm here with one of my best buds, yes. Chris Madrid, and that. we are going to do an unboxing today. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so the difference is we're going to do unboxing of some, some things that probably shouldn't really be in the box. It's a miracle that they've survived, and I think it's really important that they do survive because the boxes are not that important, but it's what's on the boxes. So the first thing I'm going to show you is something. Yeah, I can tell you right now, I want what's ever in that box. <laughs> Just and by, and by, looking by the way, at the Chris, box. Chris has not seen <laughs> most of these things. Now, a doll in its original box. How do we know? This is one that I would say, we'll never know, is it really the original box? We can see part of a shipping label. We can see perhaps duty um, um, uh, seals on it. But is it original? Oh, man. We'll never know. Wow. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Which they sure, I mean, if you look at the packing material, certainly, um, Yes, Appropriate. And, and I think that the, the, the condition of the dolls, other than a little bit of fading right here, is pretty, pretty um, consistent. I mean, they are dressed in a country style, Wonderful. and this is kind of a country style packaging job. But the, the, the reality is, we can only guess. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Now, the rest of the dolls that we're going to show you, I would say 99.9% .9 that they are in their original packaging as they were originally sold. So, this we would say maybe, maybe. possibly an original box. The dolls are original, the box is an original box. Were they put together? That we'll never know. Oh, but you know what? We did leave out one important thing that you pointed out um, earlier um, uh, about the early things, the Excelsior, mm -hmm. um, which is basically shaved wood, that that was a, a packing, packing material like our packing peanuts or any of the things that we have today. Yeah, which would say that's original to the box, but we can't necessarily say that this pair exactly. is original to exactly. the box. Exactly. Although they've been living in it now for a long, long time. Yeah. So Chris, I think that the most prevalent box doll with information that people are going to find today are going to be the Nancy Ann Storybook dolls. Now see, you don't even have to tell me which one it is. Because you know. Because I know. It's been branded with the polka dot boxes. And they, the, the boxes come in various um, iterations, but we pretty much know when we see polka dots what we're going to get. That is Nancy Ann. Oh, isn't she cute? And so this is Alice of Alice in Wonderland. And here's something that's very important about boxes. It's not necessarily the box that's important, but that pamphlet that's behind her. That's what's important, where you get all of the information of what was being produced at this time. And then, of course, again, it's one of those things that anybody could put a doll in a box. But I think we could pretty much say that this is the original. Oh, yeah. Between, doll. between the pamphlet and this and the fact that it actually has the name on there, you know, that you could do 99% certainty that this is in the original box. And these are fun to collect, and I think that right now, if someone is out there looking to do a, a collection for a young child, these are the perfect thing to, to collect up. They really because are. Because they're at a good price point right now. And they're also very cute, and, and they're, they're very small, made. and most people kept them in very good condition because these were look-at dolls. They weren't play yeah, dolls. Yeah, they, they really did market them as the first collectible doll. Yes. Now the next ones I want you to see, which I think is just pure genius, are our F and B dolls, a new playmate, and talk about figuring out what to do with the box. 
Don't from worry. and to. I mean, right there. Right there. For the parent, they don't have to worry about gift wrap, tape, ribbon, nothing. The box is a gift box. And then look at the branding there with the F&B necklace. And then you could buy all of these different dolls with different outfits. And they really help us with, you can see the straps on the shoes. And let's see, what does it say on the end? A Patsy at a durable doll. So let's see what we got in there. Which is also very cute, by the way, here. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Look at this with a grade first. So cute. Wonderful. Look at how pristine she now, is. Now, do we have the costume? Is that matching what, what is on the... Um, on the box end? No. 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 So she's another iteration, but isn't she cute? Um, she's wearing a hat, and none of the dolls in the photograph are wearing a hat. But I can shed some light on that. A hat puts a shadow. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I would say that this is without a doubt original doll to the original box. Uh, the only thing that I think is missing is she does not have her. Um, Bracelet. Oh yeah, this one here. Yeah. yeah. Wow, it would be a bracelet. Unusual eye color on her too. I don't know that it's that unusual. Oh, is I just it? think that it's it's just never had any wear. Yeah. She's wonderful. And there's nothing on this end of the box, so And we have another one too, so should we look at that one? Yes. That one here. This one has doesn't we don't know who got this one. Uh, I think it's the same girl because it came from the same Oh, collection. really? Mm -hmm. This one says it's red. Red. So we know that. And now, still nothing on the other end of the box. Oh, cute. Oh, it's a boy. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cute? Now he's red. <laughs> he certainly is red. Yes. Same color eyes and also no hang tag, no and, and, bracelet. And interesting, he doesn't have snaps on his shoes. It has oh, ribbon yeah. tops. Oh, That's interesting. But the eye color is. It's a little different. A little bit, yeah. And yeah. His, his pupils, how oh, they did the white, little white dot on that mm -hmm. too. They look bigger to me. They do, mm -hmm. they do. But what a cute little well, boy. Well, they were hand painted. I mean, in the, in the sense of, um, you know, it wasn't done by a machine, it was. I mean, even look at that little button on the side. This has got a lot of detail for a little doll. And the thing about a mint and box doll, you should have those bright colors. Red is a color that will fade without even exposure, but it's this is still nice and bright. That's pristine. And do you know that this is about a 90-year-old doll now? Wow. So that's pretty amazing. Really, really cute. It's nice to see one in such original condition because a lot of them, you're right, have faded and chipped and... But she's... He's wonderful, sorry. <laughs> so there, so we have gone, and by the way, uh, audience members, we're, we're not doing this in any particular order. It's just who, uh, where the box is. And shall we probably look at the, really the most, uh, one of the most famous dolls ever made. Oh, sure. Which is Shirley. And it's interesting because if you look at the box proper on top, very plain, but, you know, the photograph of her and the genuine Shirley Temple doll and all the trademarks, and then it, this is marked blue. Now, blue, if I saw blue on a doll, uh, another kind of doll, I would say, oh, it could be the eye color, but this dress was originally blue because Shirley has brown eyes, although these are slightly greenish because they're the early uh, tin eyes. Got it. But you can see in the socks that the ensemble was blue. Oh, definitely. With the pink trim. Really pretty, and look at the curls are completely undisturbed. And that's great too, because you can actually see how they pin them. Yes, mm-hmm. But once again, this very um, nondescript box holds a wonderful little girl. Yes. And lots of girls during the Great Depression. This was a very big deal to get this, a, a genuine, real Shirley Temple doll. I know, because they had so many knockoffs too. So then flipping to another era, 
Where are we going? Let's go right here to this little tiny box. Oh, I, I can't wait to see what's in here. So this is Marshall Field, which is a wonderful department store. And it was really the department store in Chicago. It was the numero uno. But what I think is, I love the box. So and, cute. And it's just a cute box, but wait till you see what's in it. It's, not, it's very unexpected. Okay, and there's not much to tell mm, us what's no. on the side. And there's a, oh, I, I love tissue. Isn't that part of the excitement? Okay. Holy, wow, I wouldn't have expected that. You wouldn't that. expect that. Now, my takeaway from this is she's strapped in. And what I get from this is that Dollhouse Dolls sold no clothes, no wig, nothing. That's So clearly you were meant to do this yourself. Wow. And it's a, a you know unusual dollhouse doll with the molded uh, breasts and the bent she's really, arms. I mean, she's really pretty. She's, and she's really beautifully painted. But clearly you, you could buy them dressed or you did it yourself. And once again, very historical to say, okay, now we know that they were sold, you know, not to someone as a, you know, seller to dress. This was marketed to the public. And the funny thing about this, Chris, is when you know, I see this model, which we've sold this many times before, I don't think I've ever seen one that I thought was commercial clothes. So maybe they were always interesting. Uh, a do it your you know do it yourself thing. But I think it was really mean to make people. Um, Wig it. That's what I was just going to say. How the heck do you well, wig Well, I think what little... you had to do is you had to go to the department to buy the wig. Ah, okay. So you pick your own wig because there's no, um, I see no residue where there was ever uh, anything glued on. It's just what it is. That's interesting. Great little shoes too. But I love the box. And the box yes. is, is perfect for under a, a miniature tree. Can, yes. So, uh, and that's and where it just we has have. a little. Oops. And it, maybe this is made in Germany. It's not. It does say made in made Germany. In Germany. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So clearly, this was the box from the factory, which we don't have any factory. Uh, and then they just uh, put their label. Put their on, label which was on. Pretty it. easy. So, Michael, where are we going next? Well, I think since we just went to Marshall Field. Why don't we go to Liberty of London? Ooh, I love Liberty of London. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I reckon, well, I don't recognize this, but I can read. <laughs> so look at this wonderful, colorful box. What are the beautiful, I mean, can you imagine how bright that must have been? And we're and talking then, Art Deco to the max. Yes, and then look at this. Lynchy, Torino, on the box. And a Liberty of London box. And a Liberty of so London box. So this is something that I have never seen before. No. A combination of two. So that leads me to believe that the Lenchy Company had a account with Liberty of London. Absolutely. Absolutely. Interesting, too. Did you know that a Liberty is named after the owner? No, he I didn't started know that. it. He started it in 1875, and his name was Arthur Lazenby Liberty. Now, how did you just come up with that? Adam? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, one thing that is interesting, um, I don't know if you know this, that the actual Tudor style building, they used Tudor ships. Wow. That they dismantled them and used the wood for um, to build to give it the rustic feel. Wow. Uh, because in the 1870s, you know, that was what was antique. He was, yeah, and he, he actually borrowed $2,000, I think, from his father or somebody else, and he was able to pay it back in two years. So he was extremely- That was a lot of money. He was extremely successful, and then he kept adding and adding. So you wonder, we see this box, but I wonder how many other Liberty of London special boxes exist out oh, there. Oh, I think there had to be. Oh, lots. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Lots so, and lots. But so we shall we look and see what's inside of it? Let's do. Okay. Oh, man. Look at him. So, what we have inside is a 300 series uh, a sweater boy. And these were very popular, very appealing. But the question is, um, 
what happened, that no one ever, his hand is still in his pocket and that's how they were originally marketed, but virtually unplayed with. So we don't know, did the child not make it? Did an employee take it home? We'll never know that, but he's virtually but not much different since the day he was made, which again is 90 plus years ago now. I know, so these boxes, this one actually, the, the box is special, but for most of these dolls, the boxes themselves, except for we're the information, throwaways. were mm -hmm. throwaways, but mm -hmm. look at how they've protected these wonderful little treasures. I mean, the, the Lenchy Company did do a lot of artwork on their boxes. Yes. But they were meant to be thrown away. They were yep. not meant forever. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, they had beautiful graphics, but this is, this is stunning. And he is just pristine. I mean, so beautiful. These dolls, when they are new, are just so beautiful. Yeah, very, very sweet. Yes. So, you know, Michael, it's interesting how this table is set up, that we look at this really beautiful box with the orange, very vibrant orange, which I'm sure is m even more vibrant. But then you look here at Barbie, and once again, that bright orange, how many tens of, you know, how many decades later is back in fashion? And then scan to here and look at this very iconic bright orange box. So everything is new again. Absolutely. It goes, mm -hmm. it, it's in style, it goes out of style, and it comes back, and it continually comes back. So I think this is an amazing kind of history. Of color. Of color. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the color has to appeal to children, but it also has to appeal to the person that's paying the bills. Exactly. So shall we look at Barbie? And I, I have some insight for this Barbie. Oh, she's wonderful. So this is the fashion queen. And look at the condition. And, um, you know, you, you, she's really never been taken out of this uh, setup. And so I had to, to, to be honest, I had to call Bradley and ask him, did this ever have a box lid? And he said, no, it did not. It had cellophane. Oh. And he said, all you'd have to do is blow on the cellophane at this age of, you know, almost 60 years old, and it would just go away. So um, this is how this was sold. But what I love, again, is the graphics, because you have the booklet there under Barbie, and then, of course, you've got a bubble cut, a brunette, and um, a, a, like an Amer American girl side part slightly. Yeah, it so, actually almost looks like a midge. A midge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. So they're they're using all of the, the materials to make this. And then look at the graphics on the sides. I mean, you know, you've got your stock number and then more graphics, um, new fashion queen as opposed to the old fashion queen. Um, I mean, it's, it's genius. Of, it really is. Of, is there anything of, on the back? Oh, of course. Oh, here. They're not going to waste that. Wow, look at that. So you have your vanity and your Barbie with her um, three hairstyles. Guess which hairstyle I wore. Uh, the flip. Absolutely. Yeah, the flip. Mm -hmm. I knew that. Yeah, because it, it was cute and it was very... Young and youthful, I yes, think. Yes, yes. I mean, but look at this. This is fabulous. And the graphics aren't, I mean, aren't they just fantastic? Oh, I know. I know. They really are. So in a way, for, for our Barbie collection, I almost like this. I, I, I like the packaging and the whole presentation almost better than the playing with the dolls, although we have a lot of the playing with. Yeah, this one be this would be kind of a shame to destroy. Oh no, there's the no original. reason. There, yeah, I that, mean, would, that would be just tragic, because it is just mint. Shall we look at the other little box, and I'll tell you what that is. All right, let's put. Our, since we're doing our Barbie. orange, and look at this. I think a lot of people are going to recognize that. So you know Hermes, the mm -hmm. famous um, manufacturer of bags and things. But what are they really? What can Anybody could buy from Hermes, pretty much anybody. What would that be? Scarf. Scarf, so open it up and look. Oh, oops. Oh my goodness. 
Look at that. That is a tiny, and take it out, because we have to play with it. All right, I just, you know, I'm trying to be respectful. Do what this, I'm told. This oh, is look at a miniature this. star, and this was made for Bluette's 80th birthday. Oh my goodness, that look at that. That was meant to celebrate, even though Bluettes weren't being made any um, more, it was made for that. Look at that, I've never seen one. Isn't that just amazing? Yeah, they are amazing uh, and scarves. Hand and even in a miniature, this is a hand-rolled edge. There you go. Um, beautifully done. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, can't you see that on a, a little bluette? Oh, yeah, and there we go. Yeah, don't, don't, uh, um, made in France. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of Dry funny. clean only. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, and that that history is fabulous. Yes, is I mean it's it's a very uh, it's a rare little item to have. Oh yeah, I'll just put it back here. Okay, continuing on our journey, where would we like to go next? Well, I think we should clear up this area. Do you think you can figure out what's in this box? I don't know, but <laughs> I have a feeling. It might be a cupie. <laughs> it might be a cupie. Yeah. Um, what is interesting about this to me is, I think a lot of people don't realize, well, maybe a lot of people do, is that Rose O'Neill, the creator of the Cupid, was a poet and an illustrator before the dolls were even made. Wow. So those, I would bet my bottom dollar that these are Rose O'Neill um, illustrations. Wow. And so um, there's a little story on them. But to, to us, um, we, oh, yeah. I, mean, I mean, look at the, look at the little trademark and all of that. Uh, the interesting thing is we don't know exactly what company made this because get ready for this. 14 companies made Cupies. Oh my gosh. So it was a phenomenon. I'll it really say. was, which made her a multimillionaire. Oh, and here's some little remains of some excelsior once again and a very cute um standard cupie but something that made us want to keep him that i have never seen before look at his uh, her she's wearing mary jane's i just looked at that going yeah, I've, I've never, never seen, seen that i've never seen that before wow so i happen to love cupies because my grandmother is the was the era of the cupies and she adored them so I kind of have inherited the soft spot. For Very them. sweet. But again, never, never really taken out of the box. Never played. The, 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 the label on the chest has got a little bit of wear, but not, not much. That probably just flaked off of, of old age. But the box, the box, the box is almost more unusual than the Absolutely. Cupid itself. Oops. Yeah, I mean, this box is everything. I Do mean, we so see cute. any um, indication of who it was given to? Or okay, there's there's some... Uh, that looks like stock. Stock, right? mm -hmm. let's see. No, no. 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 It just is one of those miracle things that just got forgotten and never played with. I love this. And with each smile, I hope you'll feel the cupish love of Rose O'Neill. Oh, that's sweet. Isn't that sweet? And I'm sure that that's Rose O'Neill because she was quite the poet. Yeah, so cute. So, Chris, sometimes we're happy and sometimes we're not. So I think we should look at this box here. All right. Because there's something in it that when you're not happy, you're just plain old, shall we look at the end? Oh, you're a grumpy, grumpy kid. kid. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got another F and B doll, and, and she's green. And she's green. I don't know that that's her skin tone. Tone. Yeah. A doll so cute, you just want to hug her. Oh, that's so cute. let's have a look. So interesting enough, too. If unless you turned this box over, it would give you no clue what's in no, here. No, you would never. Isn't that cute? Isn't that oh, adorable? Oh, she's adorable. Look at the blushing. And the, the condition of and the, the condition And the condition and the green. I bet that's really close to the green it was. Oh, yeah. I, and she I has a hang so. tag. 
She's got her hang tag. Wow. Should we pull that up a little yeah. bit to show? This her. is another wonderful Grumpy Kins. Grumpy doll's so cute. You want to hug her? Okay. And again. <laughs> but, I mean, That's original adorable. box, original beautiful paint, original clothes. I mean, this is, to me, a little treasure. She really is a little treasure because um, just the condition of her painting and this outfit. I mean, how, and it's still got the sizing in it. And I think that this is a really a good one for people to look at, that there are a lot of these dolls that were loved and played with and they lost all their clothes. And when you get a doll like this, this is how you dress it. This is the exactly. This is the color combination. Yeah. Um, these are the type of shoes. The whole nine yards. I know it's really. I mean, this is a historical. And this again, this is this is almost a hundred years old. Wow. Not quite, but get getting there. But grumpy kids. That is so. so when cute. you're not happy, you're just a little grumpy kids. Yeah, we are all there sometimes. <laughs> Not when you're here. <laughs> Not when I'm here, no. So do you want to go next door and see if there's another grumpy in here? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting that you say that. You might want to say that there's a, a grumpy in there. Let's see. Well, it, let's see if the box tells us anything. Well, I would say that most likely you could count that there's something French in there. Yes. Paris. Paris. Bebe. Articulé. Articulé. And this wonderful little line drawing. Line drawing, artic yeah. Uh, this is A, I think A H. Which I'm not sure what the A H um, stands for, but it could be a shop, perhaps. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, that could be a shop emblem. And then we've got this B P X X. That that again could be some kind of um, checking off. Did we get it in? Uh, do we, I mean, we do that with our inventory of, of our um, uh, contemporary dolls that we sell. Cool. So let's look and let's, let's have a look. I'll put my lovely. Put your pointer down. Put my pointer down. Nothing Be careful with my baby. Okay, so this is, yeah. <laughs> when it says Paris Bebe, I know I got to watch it. Oh, look at her, him. What do you think? Well, I think it's a him. Wow, look so at that. So they're kind of, it's a grumpy. Yeah, it is a grumpy. How funny. <laughs> it really is a grumpy. So we can pretty much say that maybe this is the original box, but it's not a Steiner box, and this is a Steiner. Oh, wow. So this could have been sold and then costumed. So it could be for the shop rather than the actual manufacturer. Wow, look at those darling shoes, too. What a cute costume. And I love the wig. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. I know that there's a lot of people that have phobias for clowns. But that's fine. I, I, you know, they don't want them all. I'll take them all. More for you. <laughs> More for me. <laughs> look exactly. at the, the hands. They're very nice. Steiner hands. And very little play. I mean, if, if any. I think most of the 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 wear on the doll is just time time going by 120 years yeah she more. doesn't look like she was played with or he was played with too much look at that costume with the little dressed in paper yeah mm -hmm. thank you i was trying to but get... it's the wig that i just the was, wig you know and it was you know it was bright green when it was new. oh i know how cute is that so michael if we're going to this red box I bet you 10 bucks I can tell you. Really? Yeah. What do you think? I think that that's a Kessner character doll. I think so too. So that what, what that leads me to um, surmise is that there should only be a Kessner product in this box. Would you not yes, agree? I would agree. And okay. if it's not a Kessner, it shouldn't be in there because they made complete dolls. And I would also say that there should be a character doll. So should we open Absolutely. the box? Absolutely. I love it has his crown on there too. He was the king of doll makers. The king of doll makers. Now that's a surprise. Wow, not one, not two, three, four characters. Well, I think, I well, think that we have three characters and a, one girl. Yes. 
because this is known as the Wunderpuppen. So this, this you would change the head um, depending on your mood swing. Wow. Uh, and they, these are around, so people did appreciate them, the original owners, and they kept them in the boxes. But there are many, many that have been uh, um, taken apart and made multiple dolls out of it, which I don't... Um, I love the idea of having the original set. With, Absolutely. I mean, look at look at this, Chris. You've got this character head with the, the, the braids on the ears. Then you have another version of that. Then you have short curls and straight, a little straight bob. So it's really kind of a wonderful thing. And she got a nice commercial dress and underneath that is a chemise. And then we know if those cards are true, who she belonged to, which I don't have any reason to think that it to wasn't. To Betty. To Betty. Mm -hmm. So this belonged to Betty. Merry Christmas, well, from Mama. From Mama. So yeah, that, is... you know, that makes sense that this would be yeah. from Mama. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, too, once you talked about that, I mean, this is another case where knowing exactly how the wigs have what they should be looking like mm -hmm. because and where the with the bows also I have to believe that there was quite a bit of breakage with this oh yes because oh, of I changing could, out heads oh yeah heads were flying left and right <laughs> and that's and that's maybe why later on collectors took the extra heads and put them on bodies that they you know they were incomplete and so why not yeah I mean that makes sense but I I mean Playing with this, even me as an adult doll collector who I value dolls, I look at that and I'm thinking, boy, that's a disaster waiting to happen. But you know what? For, for us, this gives us uh, four faces. Yes. So, you know, there's our 171 girl doll, and then there's all these lovely uh, character heads. Now, do you think most of them are the same, or do they have no, different... No, they're, they're, they're random uh, mixes. Of, oh, wow. Of yeah. I think they just took one of whatever, as long as they weren't the same, they put them in the box. Wow. Because here you can see brown-eyed, brown-eyed, blue-eyed, blue-eyed. Wow. So they were always, there no, doesn't seem to be an organization. For no, them. and it's interesting. These have their two little bows in yellow. I mean, blonde hair, and then that one has glass eyes, and the rest of them are all painted. And they both, these two both have the same bows in their hair. But that could have been done by the, the child. Yeah, that's true. Because I do believe that even though these are fairly mint, I think this did have some play, play value. Well, you would kind of hope so, wouldn't you? Yes, yes. Okay, so we know that was a Kessner. So shall we go here? Why not? Let's have a look. Let me pull this out. Oh, I see a heart. And now I know because of the emblem. We are looking at F and B. An F and B, a durable doll. The, the doll, doll with satin smooth skin. Oh, they're, Isn't they're, that interesting? They're amping it up. They now. are. Yeah. Now, now they're not. Um, and it, it's it's that I don't think that that's false advertising. Okay. So shall we look at what's inside it? Yes. Let's take a look. Oh my! Oh, it's um. It's Skippy. Skippy with his hang tag. Mm -hmm. Beautiful condition. And the girl's seventh prize. I mean... <laughs> Talk about being damned by faint praise. Yeah. Here's uh, a Skippy. You're, you're, and, you're the sixth loser. I know. <laughs> He's adorable. But Look. you know what? I think that that, if, if you think about it, Chris, if, I mean, this is, a, I believe this is a contemporary uh, contest... And there would oh, have been there yeah. would have been loads of fabulous dolls, and so today I believe he'd take a blue ribbon. But um, at the time, I, there was fabulous foofy dolls yes, ahead of him. Yes, yeah. And I, and I will say this: I don't mean this to sound arrogant, but this is the only seventh place doll in the building. <laughs> 
But isn't he cute? He is. Well, he was seventh place then, but he would not be seventh no. place now. No, He's I adorable. Love his, I love the hang tag. <gasps> wow. And, and look at I, the cute pants. Once again, interesting same button detail mm -hmm. on the side of the pants. Yeah. And, and, and uh, just a little more to it because of his uh, bigger size. But they weren't uh, exaggerating when they said satin skin. I know. They look very It's very, a beautiful it's paint so finish. so cute. That is adorable. I love this. Little Botox going on there. So, I was just noticing this sweet little girl right here. It's hard not to see her in her cellophane. And uh, very nostalgic for those of us. Of a certain age. Of a certain age. And how sweet this doll is. And it's called Baby Sweetness. Oh, look at me. So, it, I mean, it's got it all there. Where's... Um, uh, 15 inch clothing. Uh, let's see, she drinks, drinks and wets. I know, and look at the, you know, the, the design on that fabric would not have survived no, if this was all, out. It's all painted on. Yeah, uh, exactly, paint. exactly. And I remember dolls like the, these in the small town um, um, grocery stores. Yes, they were on Remember, top of the freezer section. Exactly. That, and, and this is by the famous You Need a Doll Company. Yes, so there's You Need a. You Need a. Mm -hmm. And let's see what we've got going on here. She's Baby Sweetums. Her head turns. She's soft and cuddly, sleepy eyes, movable arms and legs, washable, and you follow the leader. And mm -hmm. You Need a, since that's interesting. 1917. I didn't realize that company was that old. I didn't either. So see? But see, now we got all that information right there. Just right here. You need a doll. <laughs> That's a great but, name but for it. But isn't it, a, isn't it a miracle when you see this that I know. the cellophane has lasted? And I, it's, I know. It's, it's just a, a miracle, I think. Yeah. So I mean, so many cute graphics on this. On More on this side. What does it say on the back? I forgot. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Just a factory, a factory code. code. So, mm -hmm. you know, because this is what you'd see. Like, that's what you would see. Maybe way up there. Way there. You know, Maybe right over, way, up there. way over the ice cream and the frozen oh, yeah. corn. But, you know but what, how, if, what a... If you look at it, that would be very appealing. Yes. Like that, that's the bright colors and the, you know, day glow uh, uh, little baby dress. Yeah. Interestingly enough... Oh, there it is. I was gonna say she had. She, she there's the, the bottle. bottle. Yeah, because I said. Around. Yeah, but I mean, how cute I'll is hold this? It, hold it so that we can see that. There. Okay. Well, if I can get in there. Back nice. in the, there, there it is. Okay. There it is. Okay. So it's got its original bottle. I know, but look at that. I mean, even look at the edging on this bonnet. And the this day glow. This came from an estate in Carmel, and I just we went in there, and that was there, and we thought. There's a story here, but there was no one to tell us the story. Oh, wow. Very cute. So you, if you need a doll, there's baby sweetness. That's right. Since 1917. Yes. So since we did sweetness, why don't we do okay. this big box here? Yeah, this was intriguing to me. So are you intrigued by this box? Very intrigued. So I think visualize... 1910. Oh, okay. And Christmas morning, what would you get? A doll. Okay. I would know. You look at this box and the you know it's doll. a doll. Oh, look at her. Oh, wow. You know, you talk about German dolly face dolls, and, you know, they've kind of fallen out of favor, but you look at this. How it's a beautiful, beautiful. Doll. and it's my dearie, uh, and it was um, uh, made for George Borgfield, and I would imagine it was made by Armand Marseille for George Borgfield, yeah. because that looks like the 390 mold, don't yeah, you think? Yeah, it does, it does. The, the eye shape is a little different, but it, it's the 390. But I noticed something setting yes. this up today, that if you look at the shoes and socks, they're very similar to the shoes and socks on Daisy, the original oh, yeah. Daisy doll. Absolutely. And she's got her original chemise. And, and her tag, tag is wonderful. And 
Look at that. The and she hair, has similar to eyelashes. Daisy. Yeah, eyelashes. Um, all it says on the box, uh, not to move her right. end, is jointed kid, uh, jointed doll. That's all it says. Wow. But then when we see this, we know it's a my dearie. But you look at this and you think, if you took a German doll and were able to put it, redress it in something similar to this, how beautiful that would be. Well, I mean, if you think, look at it, it's, it's some pretty ribbon, some um, tarlatan, soft tarlatan, and some tape for the collar. And a beautiful, you know, and a beautiful wig. And it's just simple and, and enchanting. Really beautiful doll. I mean, this is for us, this is a, you know, our cabinets are pretty full for uh, big dolls um, like this, but you know, she will go under our big Christmas tree. You know, just like she did, you know, a hundred years ago. So that's my dearie. So do I get to come Christmas morning and open some of sure, these and take them sure, home? <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? Wonderful. You know, I'm looking at this box and I would say that can't be an original box. Because if you look at all of these, there's some presentation involved. Really? Well, is it because it's a corrugated cardboard? Yes. Which, that seems like a very late thing. Well, let's look at the edge, the, the, or the end. Okay. Let's look at the end. Now, this is a doll that oh. I, I have wanted for a very long time. So it is... Eloise. It's Eloise. Wonderful. And um, uh, I forget the, the maker, but it'll be on the, the tag. Um, those of you who don't know who El Eloise is, and I can't believe that there is anybody out there that doesn't. Oh, isn't she wonderful? She is the brainchild of uh, Hilary Knight, the illustrator, who illustrated her, and Kay Thompson, the famous MGM stylist who styled all the musicals. And that's a Holly toy company. There you go. And she has original tags. And if she looks messy, that's how she's supposed to look. So her hair is always a mess. And I think it's just a little treasure of a doll. She is. And I don't know why it never got played with, but uh, the only complaint I have is she doesn't have a pot belly. And in the original illustrations there, there's a little pot belly. But I think if you pull, yeah, pull her I think, rubber uh, yeah. down, it kind yeah, of gives she's, illusion. Yeah, she's, so there are a lot of, she wrote a lot of books about her. Oh, yes. All of Eloise's Adventures at the Plaza in New York. I mean, they're, they're charming books. Oh, I love them. And do you have any idea who she might have been based upon? Well, I, uh, the, the character Eloise is, is a, an amalgamation of the um, Liza Minnelli as a little girl and Kay Thompson's own inner little girl put Very together uh, as one. So. And this smile says it all. That yeah. is Eloise, oh, yes. Qu oh. quintessential Eloise. I just Eloise. love Eloise. Yes. And they're making them uh, again still. Um, and there's a, an Eloise store at the plaza in New York um, City. But this is an original 1950s wonderful. Eloise. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Even her feet are a little wonky. But you know what? It's not a great box. Is no. It? I mean, it was meant to be thrown in the trash. I know, because there was no... Yeah, there's no, to this box at no, all. No, no. Wonderful doll. So we decided that instead of trying to unbox and me potentially spilling this all over the floor, we decided to move it up so you could see what a wonderful presentation this is. Not only is it fabulous furniture, but you could also tell exactly what you're supposed to have in I that mean, box. I mean, I think we could pretty much clearly state that this is the original box and these are the original contents because it's all there except if we are going to go by this we're missing one chair and I think that's a pretty good odds for um, children's toys to just be missing one piece. Absolutely. And I would probably date this at the last quarter of the 19th century but you know, some wonderful things. Just really wonderful, but this box, I mean, talk about having context. 
And Chris, what I think is interesting about this, this is this happens more often than you would think with miniatures that you find them in uh, original boxes. Really? Yeah, and I think it's because miniatures have always appealed to adults, so they're not always for children. You know, there's a long tradition of adults collecting miniatures going way back oh, to that's the... that's true with some of the, the babies' houses. Right, exactly. So, you know, did someone just love this and never play with it? And, and I'm sure it was packed with Excelsior at one time, which is long gone. Charming. Look at this. That yeah, isn't that little, fabulous? That's so fabulous. And the, the, the carving and, and the cut velvet on the sofa is pretty wonderful, too. It really is. I mean, they impressed that. That is fabulous. All right. Now I'm interested because we have a, a prize-winning set of dolls right here. You can't really tell anything about these dolls except one says dark. And what does it say on the other end? Uh, nothing. Oh, kid. Oh, a kid. kid. Kid dolls. Kid dolls. So I would assume these are kid body dolls. Okay, so that's one. And let's see if we have the same. Kid dolls. Kid mm -hmm. dolls. Blonde hair. Interesting. So it's it didn't interesting it has a different label yeah, with and, blonde hair rather than dark. And and it was like, okay, one, one assembler slapped it here and the other one puts it on the other end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we've got. Oh, isn't she sweet? Got a pretty <gasps> dress girl doll. Wow. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I mean, look at how beautiful original shoes and I mean this this fabric is it's tender but it's yeah still no there. but it's very stiff it's almost like it's got a backing yeah so, and that hat is adorable well I think this was meant to be a presentation and then you wash it once or play with it and it falls apart yeah or you take that off and you make more clothes make more mm -hmm. clothes but she's adorable and that hat is... And the, if you open the other one, you'll see that they are indeed a pair. All right. Oh, look. Now, I know you've talked about this a lot in, in other videos that you've done. Do you see something going yes, on here? Yes, I absolutely do. And it is... Do you want to explain to them? So, we have a girl and a boy. Clearly boy. Boy haircut, boy pants. Boy, sailor top. I don't want them to fall out. Well, the interesting thing is, is that we have cued pink is girl, boy is blue. However, it wasn't like that actually until recently in the probably the 50s. But boys wore pink because pink was a stronger color and girls wore blue. And then I don't know why they got reversed. But anyway, so if you see this, this is absolutely correct presentation to have the boy in pink. And again, I think it's just amazing that they have survived. Oh, I know. And they're, you know, with the, with the matching outfits, it's the same material, same hat material. They're adorable. And again, these are under the tree dolls. Absolutely. They'll be under the tree like they were 100, 100 years ago. Very cute. Um, and then usually I don't particularly have dolls around with ribbons, but I thought this ribbon was kind of neat that they they both received. Yes. And uh, for uh, the judge's choice. And they won together. And they won together. Wonderful. And I think it's just because of the the originality. Oh. They're not. These are not rare dolls. You know, you could find them, but not in this condition. No, and I think that's the thing too is that people look at certain dolls like an am or something but you have to understand in original condition how it changes it how how impactful that doll is and i will put out to the costumers if you look at this they're very elongated bodies but you see how they costumed it to make them look really very nice i mean it's simple it's not over frou-frou it's just the right amount Absolutely. They're, they're darling. Once again, a treasure for someone who wants to bring one of these back to 
what they should what mm -hmm. they should look like. So another box that doesn't tell you much from the top, but let's look here. There's a lot of information there. So we have Johnny Grell's own Raggedy Ann doll, Georgie Novelty Company, exclusive licensed manufacturers. Well, they might have had a license for some things, but not for Raggedy wow. Ann. This was a problem. But the main thing that I love about this is they're dated. Right 1951. There. So I think that's pretty neat. That's amazing. So, and so we're talking about uh, 72, is that 72 years old? Yeah. So it's 72 years old. Look at great condition. She still has her hang tag. Wonderful, so that says novelties. And there's the other side. And really in bright, bright colors. I, I don't think she's ever been played with. No, I mean, Look at the brightness of the color in the... My daughter loved Raggedy Ann. Oh, she did. Oh, my God. <laughs> she did. We went through about 50. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. She pulled the hair out. Oh, she did? Yeah, oh, it just sucked her thumb. Well, but... She won't get this one. No, no, <laughs> she won't. She's outgrown that, too. No, she has. So finally. the other Andy, um, let's show them Andy... His box is not in as good a condition, but it has on the other end, it's missing one end, but this other end, it has some also interesting information. The price point, $379. Do you know that was a lot of money that in is 1951? A lot of money. That is a lot of money. That's Considering, a lot of money. Considering, you know, houses were like... My grandmother could feed her family $5 a week. Wow. So that was a lot of money. I, you know, I, I don't think you think of Raggedy Ann as a very expensive no, doll. No, but they were made. These were made in America. And shall we show them? Oh, candy? look at him! Nice and bright. He's nice and bright, but he's had a little bit of, little oh, bit dear. of damage on his foot. But that's all right. We'll just ignore that. I know, but look at the how bright but the rest, the of, rest of it is. Just great. Fabulous. And look at the the. the I mean. She did, this manufacturer did have a very good eye of how to put together things because look at the scale of that mm -hmm. print. It's just great. Let's see his hat. It's still there. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we decided that probably the best thing to do instead of trying to unbox her, we would do it ahead of time. So this is a wonderful Eden Bebe. And this means I walk alone. Basically, I walk by myself. So this is a walking doll. And she also came with very interesting, there's a little propaganda, propaganda in French, which shows her walking alone into her mother's waiting arms. Very sweet. Interesting, um, Chris. I think if you look at the, the drawing of the girl, she seems older than we would uh, uh, than we would today um, think of a girl playing with dolls. But they played with dolls a lot longer in the nineteenth century. I know, I know, because she is. She's much. She's she's like probably preteen teen. Yeah. If I you think look at so. that, but true. I mean. Now, I think that this paper is so, it's so rare to see this because this is the cheapest paper known to man. I mean, if you just touched it, it would fall apart. Wow. So even to have this little bit is a big, big deal. Wonderful. And that it also came with this very large. They wanted to let you know it was patented. <laughs> so, so don't, don't yeah. forget that. But then here... Can see the, uh, but I can also. I just noticed something. Yes, she's in her original chemise, but she's missing the label on her um, belt. Right, which, as you can see here, is sorry, right there. Right, and that was probably also paper. Mm-hmm. And that could have just disintegrated. 
Yeah, because she has a little scuff, so I'm sure she, she I'm sure she was played with. I think she was. Yeah. And she's got a little chipping on her hands, and that's kind of normal of this this era. But it's wonderful that she's actually retained the um, original chemise. And her wig and her, and her and, wig, yeah. And her eyelashes. Yeah, the eyelashes don't make it a lot. They don't. They don't. So should I should uh, should you see her in action? I'd love to see her in action. Okay. She's moving a little slow, but you know, she's an old girl. I think what they didn't um, advertise is that, that her head moves besides her feet. So this is the last of the dolls and interesting label on the end, which says Bebe, which is French, but Olga. And Olga, to me, doesn't seem French. No, it doesn't. Um, there's an interesting, um, we bought this from a, a, just recently, and the seller that we bought it from said the same thing. They thought it was something really off with it being called a Bebe Olga. Like, is it some other, from a, some other country and they're trying to Francophile it with the, the Bebe in the front? But the, the last Romanov family had a very close relationship with France. And if you don't believe me, all you have to do is go to Paris and walk across the Alexander Bridge and you can see this incredible monument. So here you have this young family with these young, beautiful children and their first daughter, guess what her name was? Olga. Olga. Okay. So you had the popular thing of um, the craze of all these beautiful children, like today, William and Kate's children. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing. Um, so why would you not want to market that with a baby named Baby Olga? Oh, wow. And so if we open it up, you can see it's of the time, and it's an SFBJ. In original clothes, original stringing, and what I think is very interesting is look at how it's so beautifully color coordinated. The pink on the box and the pink, all that kind of mauvey pink. It's really just a beautiful thing. She has original stringing, so I'm not going to pick her up because she's kind of loosey goosey. But I mean, even that color in the the socks goes through the whole costume. I mean, yes. that, that dust, must, not musty, <laughs> dusty pink. Pink, yes. It's, yes. So, I mean, it, it, in a way, it's a little bit of a bittersweet um, name brand on a doll because we know how the story ended. But um, we're, we're glad to have her remembered in this really pretty little doll. She's wonderful. It's amazing now that we see some of these very plain boxes opened up to their fabulous treasures inside. And what's so wonderful that these very humble boxes meant to be thrown away have preserved some of these dolls to be treasured and to be studied and to be researched because their importance in terms of originality for researchers and dolls really makes a difference. So these plain boxes are treasures in the information that they provide us. So I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and enjoyed the beautiful treasures inside. And um, I hope you have a wonderful time here at World Doll Day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.